Southwest 32, 16 only tired, runway 24 right to line. Hello everybody, welcome to Pilot Edge. Today we're going to be demonstrating how to install Pilot Edge into X-Plane 11 with Windows. First you need to start by logging into your Pilot Edge account within the Pilot Edge website. Once you're there, hover over the Pilot Center and select Download Software. This video is intended for those of you who are visual learners. These same steps can also be accomplished by simply reading the download and configuration instruction pages that you see here. Even after the completion of this video, take a look at the configuration instructions under X-Plane as it may help you learn a few things. Next under X-Plane, we'll go to the download button, click that, and we have three downloads here at the top. The first two are required, the last one is optional but highly recommended. The first one is the Pilot Edge plugin itself. Give that one a left click and begin the download. Below that is a Microsoft 2010 C++ file. You're going to need to click that. It's going to redirect you to the Microsoft website. Simply hit the download button there and get that downloaded as well. You'll need that if you don't have it already. Now it's time to navigate to your main X-Plane directory. In the bottom left corner of your screen, use the Windows search feature and type File Explorer. Select File Explorer when it populates. It has an icon of a yellow folder. Your next step is to locate where you installed X-Plane. When you first installed X-Plane, it asked you where on the computer you wanted to store it. This could be on your C drive, it could be in your documents. Wherever you told X-Plane to live, you need to locate that now. For me, my X-Plane folder is in my E drive. However, and wherever you find your X-Plane 11 folder is up to you, as long as you're able to find your main X-Plane 11 directory that looks like this. Once you've located this folder, give it a double left click. And now we need to return back to our Pilot Edge plugin download from the website. Take your download and make sure it's unzipped. You'll know that if you can see the unzip Pilot Edge folder right here. Next, in your main X-Plane directory, navigate to Resources and give that a double left click. Finally, take your unzip Pilot Edge folder and drag and drop into your Plugins folder. Now that you've dropped the Pilot Edge plugin into your Plugins folder, let's double left click Plugins and make sure it's in there. You should see the Pilot Edge folder, give that a double left click, and you'll see the contents that are displayed here. The order may be slightly different in your folder, but as long as everything is here, that's what you're looking for. If you downloaded any of those CSL packages that we were talking about earlier, that's in order to see the other airplanes in great detail. You're going to drag and drop those into VS Pro Resources and the CSL folder. Now that you're done with that, make sure you've also clicked on the Microsoft download that we had you download earlier from the Microsoft website. That should begin an auto install, just follow the prompts accordingly. If you get any error messages, that might be because you already have it installed, in which case you can exit out of the installer. Now it's time to launch X-Plane. Now that we're loaded up in X-Plane, let's take a look and see if everything worked. At the top of your screen, go to Plugins, and you should find Pilot Edge amongst your list of plugins. Select Connect, and you're going to use your same email and password that you used to access the Pilot Edge website. Next, select a call sign. This could be any tail number, either United States registered or international. However, if you're going to use an international tail number, do not include any dashes. You may also use an air carrier call sign. In the next box where it says Type, you're going to enter in your ICAO code for your aircraft. We're in a Cessna 172, therefore our aircraft type will be C-172. Below the type you'll see the airline and livery fields. These boxes are used to tell the network what your airplane should look like to others, as in what kind of paint scheme you have, what kind of livery you're using. This all has to do with the CSLs that we talked about earlier in the download section. You can find more information about the CSLs and what to put in these boxes on the X-Plane download portion of the Pilot Edge website. However, these boxes are optional, so we're not going to fill them in right now. Let's just get connected. Connected to Pilot Edge. Once you've clicked connect, go ahead and check the home page of the Pilot Edge website. See if your name and call sign are listed there as one of the pilots connected to the network. You may also use the live map feature and find your airplane there. Now that you've established that you're connected to the network, let's get your radios up and running so you can give air traffic control a call. First, navigate to your settings in the top right. We'll start with your sound settings. Ensure your radio slider is between 50 and 60%. You may also adjust your other volumes to ensure you can hear your radios accordingly. Next, select either the joystick or the keyboard tabs, depending on which button you're going to assign as your push to talk. Press and hold the button you'd like to use as your push to talk. As I do this, you see that that button illuminates. This is my push to talk. If your push to talk says anything other than contact ATC, go ahead and hit edit on the right. Just type in contact ATC at the top and you'll find the option below to click it, apply, and done. Now let's check your input and output devices. At the top, visit plugins again and select pilot edge and preferences. 
Here you can select your appropriate audio input and output devices. Your input should be your microphone, ideally a headset, microphone, or an external microphone other than your computer's webcam. Your audio output is the device where you actually will hear air traffic control. This can be separate from your X-Plane audio in case you want to have that coming through speakers and your ATC coming through a headset, or you can make it all the same. Select your appropriate devices, and then select OK. Lastly, let's do a radio check. PilotEdge allows you to do a self-radio check on 123.45 in order to help you troubleshoot issues on your own. Simply tune your COM1 and COM2 radios to 123.45 in both actives. Ensure both COM1 and COM2 are selected on. Hold down your push to talk and do a radio check. Radio, radio check. check. Radio, radio check. check. This frequency is specifically designed on the network to loop back into your headphones. If you hear yourself, your audio is working properly. If you don't hear yourself, take a look at the links below to troubleshoot your audio further. Now there's one more easy step before you can get started, and that's to turn off all of your AI traffic within X-Plane. PilotEdge injects all the traffic that you're going to need to see on the network, and the X-Plane AI traffic can actually interfere with that. To turn off your AI traffic, begin by going to the top right, select the airplane icon. Next, under Flight Configuration, select your AI Aircraft button. This window should be blank. If you have any AI aircraft loaded up, such as this, simply click the X next to the airplane to get rid of all of them. Once this window is blank, select Done and Apply Changes. Now that your radios are working and your AI traffic is turned off, it's time to go flying. If you'd like any further technical support, or if you'd like to engage with our community of thousands of PilotEdge users, stop by our Discord chat server. Details on accessing our Discord server are in the description below. Be sure to follow PilotEdge on all social media to stay up to date on the latest and greatest. Enjoy your flight, Captain.